Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn how to escape double quotes in your SQL insert statements in Microsoft Access. What does all that mean? Well, we're going to find out in just a minute. Today's question comes from Alex in Jersey City, New Jersey, one of my Platinum members. Alex says, I'm using the technique that you taught us in your saved notes video where you can take the current notes on the customer form and archive them by saving them in the contact table, and it works great. However, it encounters a runtime error 3075 syntax error missing operator in query expression and breaks the code if there are double quotes in the notes field. How can I fix that? Ah, uh, Alex, you are running into the old double double quotes problem. I've done a couple of different videos on this one. Let me run through how to fix it real quick, but first, for everyone else, if you haven't watched this video, go watch this. It basically is where you've got a notes field on your customer form, right? And you want to add more to it, but you don't want to keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding notes, right? Because eventually that field's going to get really, really big. So what you could do is you could take the old notes that are in there and archive them to your contacts table. So you've got a history of them. You're not losing them, but they're not maybe the most current notes. So that's archiving your notes, saving your notes, right? So in this video, I show you how to make a little button, right? You click the button, it takes what's up here and it drops it down into here, into the, the contact history, basically. Then you can type different notes in up here. All right, so go watch this first so you understand what I'm talking about. Now, both of these are developer level videos, which means we're gonna use some VBA programming. If you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. Go watch my video on variables if you've never used those before. Watch my video on the replace function. And also go watch my older video on concatenation where I talk about using single quotes, double quotes, double, double quotes, and so on. And optionally, watch this video where I talk about using the double, double quotes and not the single quotes. All right, these are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch those and come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download off my website if you want to. And just as a quick recap of what I covered in the Save Notes field uh, video, here is the Notes field, okay? And here is my contact history. Normally, you come in here and you say, okay, we talked about blah, 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 whatever, okay? And you have a history of all the things you talked about. Well, let's say these notes here, they're not particularly relevant anymore. You want to replace this with something else, but you don't want to lose this. And you don't want to necessarily have to, okay, I want to cut this and open that and click in here and paste and then come back out here again. And It'd be nice to just have a single button to do that, right? And it's very easy to do. This is the focus of my previous video, right? I'll just copy and paste that button. We'll call this archive or archive the notes or whatever you want to call it. And that was a shift enter inside there where you type in archive and then shift enter. That'll give you another line inside your button caption. All right, let's give this button a good name. We'll call this the archive, archive button, BTN. Okay, I'm gonna right click, build event. That'll bring up my VBA code editor. Let me move this down a little bit here so we can see it. All right, we're inside the archive button click. All right, and in here, we're just gonna write a simple little execute statement. So current db.execute. And I'm going to insert into, this is my append query, right? It's insert into contact T. What are the fields in the contact T? Customer ID, so we know who it is, the description, and the notes, okay? Now we're not pulling off of a table, we're just gonna insert some values off the form. So it's gonna be values, and then in parentheses are three things. So if it's customer ID, let's say it'll be five, and then description. For this, I'm gonna put just the word archive notes, archived notes, like that, all right? The actual text, archive notes for the description. And then the notes field, all right, would be whatever's in the notes field. So I'll just put in here notes. Okay, close that up, press enter. Now, in here, we've got string values. So these have to normally be double, double quotes. Okay, and if I wanted to put the actual word notes in there, I would, like that. Okay, but I wanna replace the five with the customer ID and I wanna replace the notes with the actual notes field. So. And yes, when I write these statements, sometimes I'll actually just type in bogus values and then go back and fix them because it's, it's kind of easier sometimes to think that way. So I want to replace that five right there with the actual customer ID on the form. So in this case, it's going to be 
customer ID like that, All right? And the string here, ampersand customer ID, ampersand start the string back up again. Archive notes is gonna be just that, the words archive notes. So that can stay just like it is, okay? And the notes field is gonna be replaced with, remember, close the string, notes, and open the string again. Because you gotta have double, double quotes inside the string. Oh, actually it'd be these two. Okay, see how that works? So there's your double, double quote issue. And then when you're done with that, we can say, uh, okay, we've inserted it in the table, notes equals null, we'll blank the notes field. And then we'll maybe notes.setFocus to put the, the focus back there. And then if you want, you can beep, or you could pop up a message box saying it's done, whatever. All right, so that's all you need right there. That's a brief overview of what we covered in the other video. All right, save it. Always throw in a debug compile from time to time. Come back out here. Let's close that. Open it up again. We'll put in here. Here are my old contacts. And then I'll click the button. Boop. Okay, now let's go check and make sure they're in there. And right here, archive notes. Here are my old contacts. Remember the notes go down here on the bottom. These are the descriptions. Okay, all right. More contact info, right? And the, the point behind this is, right, you come back to this customer a while ago, you know, in the future, and okay, this more contact info, this this note isn't valid anymore, so here are some new stuff. So I'm gonna type, I'm gonna archive that and say, here's more stuff. And then whatever, we move on to the next guy and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here's where the problem comes in. All right, I'll come in here and type in, uh, Rick said there are no more jelly beans like that. Okay, there's quotes in there. When I try to archive that, bam, there's your error message. And it says, syntax error in query expression, Rick said, uh, see the quotes in there, see? The problem is these quotes inside the field are messing up this thing, right? Because your set of quotes actually go in here and it, it, it closes that string and it messes up the whole SQL statement. So there's two ways you can fix this. You can either rewrite this as a record set, which in some ways is actually better, but it takes more lines of code, but we're not gonna do that today. Or you can escape those characters. What does it mean to escape the characters? It means to translate those characters into something else. Websites do this all the time because you can't send some characters through like the query string of a web browser. So you gotta escape them. You gotta change them into something else. Or if you know HTML, right, you escape a space character with the, uh, the MBSP semicolon, whatever, right? <laughs> That's called escaping it. Basically, it's translating one character into another safe character that can be processed. Now, in this particular case, all we have to do is escape a single double quote with another double double quote. So you end up getting double 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 quotes. <laughs> it's weird, but that's how it works. All right, and to do that, we'll just throw this into a temporary variable and then turn every set of double quotes into double double quotes. And we'll do it just like this. We'll say dim s as a string, s equals notes, s equals replace notes, or excuse me, s. We're gonna replace a double double quote like that with, all right, ready? Quote one, two, close the quotes. Make sense? I know, it's crazy. So we're gonna replace that with that, okay? And again, I refer you back to my why I prefer to use double double quotes instead of single quotes in a previous video that I mentioned earlier because it's all kinds of crazy with names and all different stuff. And if you're working with SQL Server, then you got the problem that the whole different ball of beans, but this is for access, okay? Now, once you've done that, you come over here, you hit the button, Oh, hang on. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm leaving this error in the video on purpose. Hit debug. And look what I forgot to do. I did the work up here, but it's still notes here. I forgot to change that. All right. Stop. S goes here now. S, right? We, we're putting notes into S, fixing it. Now that's got to be an S. And I guarantee one of you will make that mistake. <laughs> All right. Save it. Again, throw in a debug compile. Come over, meow. Hit the button. There we go. Check the contacts. And there they are right there. And they go in nicely.
Okay, that's just, again, a double-double quote problem. And I see the double-double quote problem all over the place. And so that's why I do multiple videos on it, because it's a stickler for a lot of people. All right, if you like learning this kind of stuff, if you enjoy my teaching, then come on over to my website and check out my developer lessons. I've got lots and lots of different ways you can learn with me. I got 40-some different levels of VBA classes and all kinds of cool stuff. I'll put a link to this down below. Come check it out. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members 
get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my Tech Help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any Tech Help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.